So let's talk about Project Soli. Our hand is an amazing instrument. It's very fast and precise, particularly when we're using tools that require full dexterity of our fingers. The sensitivity and accuracy is very, very natural to us. We use it every day, we don't even notice it. But we're still not able to capture the sensitivity in our user interfaces, which are still quite clunky. There are many reasons why fingers, and using fingers for manipulation is superior. For example, if you measure the bandwidth from the cortex to the tip of your fingers, it's 20 times the bandwidth to the, uh, to the elbow. So what if we can capture this power of, fear of fingers, this powerful capabilities of hand and fingers, and use for user interaction? What kind of interfaces can we build for wearables or other devices? I've been asking these questions for a long time. Now, one approach is to give everybody a tool. Give everybody a pen and go with that. Not scalable. What we propose instead is that you use your hand motion vocabulary, a familiar hand motion you already learn from tools you're using every day for the interaction. For example, we all learn this motion, right? We're using mobile, mobile phone all the time. We, uh, we, we manipulate this every day. And we don't have to learn it again. It's very intuitive. What if we remove the mobile phone and only leave the motion, which you already know? And then this motion, decoupled from the physical device, decoupled from the mobile phone, can be used to control other devices and becomes more generic, more generic input device, input uh, modality for everything else. It doesn't have to be only virtual touchpad. There's a multiple motion, there's a broad vocabulary of motions which can be created by your hand. Your hand can become a variety of controls, such as virtual dial, a slider, or anything else. So note, note how haptic feedback can naturally, because your hand provides you haptic feedback while you're using it. So these are very powerful physical metaphors, which we're already aware of, and they can form interaction vocabulary they can be applied to multiple contexts of use for multiple devices. For example, you can use you know, your virtual touchpad to control the map on the, on the watch, or you can control, make a virtual dial to control your radio and volume on radios across local stations. <coughs> multiple things you can do. So what you propose is your hand can be complete, self-contained, interface control. Always in you, intuitive, easy to use, and very, very ergonomic. <laughs> In fact, it can be the only interface control and only interface device that you, would, that you would ever need for wearables. All physical controls replaced by your hand. Now, to accomplish that, we need a sensor. And not every sensor would work. But we need a sensor that can capture submillimeter motions of your fingers that are overlapped in 3D space. Because you want to put it into the small devices such as wearables, it has to walk through materials, it has to go through materials, work day and night, and be small enough to fit into the device. So we also don't want to instrument the user, we don't want to put things in your hand. So we have to go, so we looked at the electromagnetic spectrum, like the entire one, and still couldn't find anything appropriate. You know, capacitive sensing is very nice, but it cannot track 3D. Cameras would struggle with overlapped fingers. However, in between these two extremes, there is a sense which is almost perfect. <coughs> would fit all our requirements, and that's radar. The radar can do almost all of that. All of the things I talked about, fast, precise, can work through materials, and all of that, except for one thing, doesn't fit in the watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to make it smaller, otherwise it's not gonna be wearable. So, uh, and that, that's kind of hard. So we didn't have to start with a dish. Thankfully, with this is our first prototype about this size on a table. And then over the course of time, we work with our partners and industrial collaborators to go through many prototypes like that. And today we have our first gesture radar that is small enough to fit into the wearable. <laughs> Here it is. Sensors 
running at 60 gigahertz that can capture the motion of your fingers and hand in free space, touchless, at resolutions and speeds not possible before. And you don't have to be a ref engineer to use it. Everything you need is inside antennas, control electronics, and we can make it at scale. <coughs> uh, when we connect to the computer, we can run it at, freaking, at, at speeds up to 10,000 frames per second. And because we are fast and furious, here is an ATAP, as we did mention, we went from the first prototype to this chip I just showed you in 10 months. So um, it's not only hardware that matters. The real essence of the radar, the richness of it, is in the signal. So originally we think about radar as something like an echo. You know, we, you know, send a signal, bounce back from the object, come give you a signal return. However, to, couple it, to capture the complexity of the hand, the motion, the close range, what you would have to do, you would have to have the nano beams scanning the entire hand in, 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 in real time, which is really expensive, both in hardware-wise and computationally. We cannot do wearable radar this way. Instead, what we do, we illuminate the entire hand with a broad beam and truly receive signal as a complex superposition of reflection from different parts of your hand as it changes and moves in space. And as the hand moves, you can see that this shape of the signal changes. So we track changes in the signal, the change of the signal, and estimate shape of the hand from, from the signal changes. And now to explain how it works, I would like to invite on stage Jamie Lee, our lead research engineer and radar expert. Oh.